This TJ is outnumbered about 700 to 1 on my premises of Cherokees. If you hadn't seen, there's hundreds of them back there. But it's a, let's just say it's a family member. It's got a whole bunch of stuff done to it. I'm not going to be too specific, but you see the thing right there? Let me get the hood up and we'll show you what we're working with. You can tell how good of a Wrangler person I am. I open the door to pop the hood. Oh yeah, very nice, very nice. We'll use the hood prop. So yeah, I don't know if we can see it very good. The bank's intake goes through, what would it be, a water to air to water, water to air, intercooler. And yeah, I don't even know where the turbo's even at. Somewhere down there, possibly. Get in the shop, be more specific, but it's a turbocharged 4.0. He's had it for a while, and he hit me up the other day, said it just started running bad. So let's get in it, go down the road, see what it's doing, and we'll go from there. Got one of them. Yeah, there's the water cooler right there. Oh, it's even got a short throw shifter. That's different. All right, give it a fire up. Fires up. It's got one of these little gauges down there. Let it warm up, see if it'll work. And we're moving. I drove the thing before, if I remember right, you had to kind of drive it around, get some heat involved in it. So, I'm gonna drive it around when it starts acting up, I'll show you what it's doing. All right, we ain't made it very far, ain't even got much temperature in the motor yet, but watch that boost gauge right there. I'm just gonna go steady in the throttle. It's uh, basically fooling itself. It's got a second transmission shift. Nice. A little pull here. It tries to do what it's supposed to. It just don't sound right. So I drove it around and kept making it mad, acting up and stuff until the check engine light started flashing, so that means something is really wrong. And that's one thing I forgot to add. I still think it's an injector, the more I thought about it. But I think this is O2 model, and if you don't know, O5 and O6 are like notorious about a uh, bad PCM or whatever. So I don't think it's bad PCM. We'll see. Probably let it cool and get some plugs out of it and see what they look like and go from there. I really like this short throw shifter. I, mean, I wouldn't think I would, but I do. Let's see what the code read. My scanner is so old, but I like it. It, it actually does pretty good. I ain't put batteries in it in about 10 years. Seems like we got a little lopy of an idle now. One coat. Cylinder four misfire. All right, so this is why I like this scanner. Press this button. Top reported fix, spark plugs. Well figure he's already tried that and then you got cam sensor then you got crank sensor injector wiring ignition coil carbon see so it goes through this whole list tells you in order the most top reported fixes I think it yeah golly look at all them that this scanner has saved my life I know some twenty thousand dollar scanner probably does a better job but this thing was four hundred dollars 10 years ago and it's still telling me some good information it's pretty good let me get it cooled off i fired it back up just out of curiosity almost sounds like a uh, lifter i don't think he's had the head off i was gonna say he might have put lifters on a old cam i ain't gonna not gonna get too technical on that subject as goofy as it looks i'm gonna get these stethoscopes and actually listen to each injector when a lifter went away so 
should be good. But I'm gonna listen to each injector, just see what they sound like. I'm gonna let her chill off and then we'll do a little more digging and see what we can come up with. Alright, I'm pretty sure two months later I'm back on this thing. If you pay attention to my floors, I just did them. Anyway, back on the Jeep. I had to go back and watch old video to even remember what it was doing, but I'm sure y'all remember because you just seen it. Got all the compressions wrote down. The battery went dead on that one. It was about 160. And ironically enough, that's pretty much the lowest one. 170, 70, 65 on four which is where we're seeing our problem, 170, 170. Called the owner, and that's what he confirmed that he had low compression. I think he had 100 PSI on number four, which gauges read different, but 100 is low. So I don't know, I don't know. Pull the plugs, my camera sucks, it's not gonna do you a good job, but ironically, number four was the only plug I dropped, it hit the ground and bent the electrode around there. But I called him, he he gapped them, so that wasn't the problem. I have seen that before. But other than that, I mean, they all look about the same. I feel like if it was an injector overfueling, underfueling, you would see some differentiation on the plug. I've got a leak down tester. I'm going to see if I can make it leak out of the valve. But my next only solution, this is a coil pack. I can't tell you how many times I fixed Jeeps that has brand new parts been thrown at them and it's just cheap made in China junk. It's all you can buy. So let me get this leak down set up, see if we can make it leak. If not, we're gonna throw maybe some new plugs so we can read off of them. And then, well, I did this in another video. I've got a junk motor out there. It's got a busted piston. So I'm gonna get this old junky factory coil pack off there that I know is good. See what it does. So I don't know if it's on the right stroke for this. We'll just see. I have to be careful because there's hots everywhere. Positives. Seems to be in the right stroke. Basically, you can get fancy snap-on ones that do like different stuff, but that's the pressure you're putting in and that's the pressure in the cylinder. And literally, you're just looking for a match. It the farther that they're separated each other, I guess would be the word, then you've got cylinder leak down somewhere. It could be a valve, could be piston, but... So now we're on some kind of valve stroke. It needs a starter too. Here, turning the motor over. So that should be BDC, I'm pretty sure after compression would be right. Doesn't matter. It's not a problem. Hmm. All right, on the next step. I don't really know what to expect. Oh. Let me show you what I did. Actually, I don't know why I'm showing you. I put number four plug and number six and number six plug and number four swapped them out basically and then i've got a whole coal pack so far that's all i've changed but i haven't found nothing wrong if i remember right it runs good you have to get some heat in the motor so could be electronic all right Let's go for a test track. i barely remember what was going on but i do remember it had a check engine light and I'm pretty sure it's a code for cylinder four misfires. Give it a test drive. When it starts acting up, I'll go from there. But it's not fixed. I'm starting to think fuel pressure. We'll shove it up in third. We'll do them up 40. It's just like an all around miss now. It's not a consistent. Oops. Here, it's just shaking the whole Jeep. I'm starting to think low fuel pressure. We'll see. All 
right, so I got in it real hard, let it rev out to like five grand, kind of high boost in it through the check engine light. I've never seen it. I wonder if it's Banks tune. It actually, I was still in it, even though it, it just like shut off and it just come down about 2,500, come back up. So we'll see. All right, two codes. Let's guess what they are. Cylinder four, cylinder four. Confirmed. That's so weird. Like spark plugs. Crank position, injector wire, and coal, clean carbon. Yeah, replace engine. Camshaft. At the moment, it seems to have a dead consistent miss. So let me get out and check it. I wanted to check those before I did anything. Cylinder four. I can't visibly see anything, and obviously, well, I can unplug the injector to see if the miss changes, but it's gonna throw a code. If you listen to the muffler, you can most definitely hear an inconsistent miss right now. Let's just unplug and check and see what happens. Computer is telling us it's number four. I ain't getting anything yet, but you can see it's really not shaking like it's running bad. That makes sense on the exhaust that maybe a burnt valve, which is what my brother was thinking, because of the turbo setup. But I wonder if it's not technically missing, but it's kind of blowing some exhaust out to make it sound like it's missing. But it's got enough air to actually fire. Just zip the coil pack off, see if we can check compression on number four back here. All right, learned the hard way. This spark plug is hot, but it is, I'm sure y'all ain't focused in on it, but it's as clean as could be. Literally. Got that screwed in. We was, what did I say earlier? 165? Yeah, really. One sixty. So nothing's changed. Hmm. I might just have to move the injector around and see if we can get the inject see if we can get the mist to follow the injector. That's about all I know at this point. It's got compression, change the spark, so it should be good spark unless for some reason the PCM's not firing. The coil, which I don't think is possible, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you're paying attention, there's four wires in there. One's a ground, no, one is a hot, and then three is a pulsated grounds from the computer. So if you look, there's one, two, three coils. So that, let's see, that's number four. So number four and number three share the same coil. So the last, if it's fire number three, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be fire number four. So we got compression, we should have spark. We got a good spark plug. The only thing left is a injector. Like I said, I want to check fuel pressure, but for some reason it keeps throwing that same coat. So I guess at this point, I'm gonna put it back together. Probably have to let it cool off. It's good and hot. And then we'll, I guess, swap an injector around. All right, I got it pushed up there by the tree downhill. I'll roll in the shop in the morning when it's nice and cool, the motor. And I don't have a set of turbo injectors laying around. I'm pretty sure there's gotta be, they've gotta be bigger, have to be. So I'll get those swapped around, see if we can actually move the mist to another cylinder or figure out why it's calling number four. I don't know. Got it back in the shop. Ironically, I got on the same shirt, different hat. About a week later. Actually about a week and a half. Anyways, 
fuel rail. I got it pulled up. Don't really look like it, but you should be able to see right there. And I've got this injector marked as number four. No, you can't read it, but I can. And then I got number one. Can't really explain why I decided on number one, but that's the one we're going to use. So I'm going to put it back in there. I'm going to pull our own meter out, ohm them out, and stuff like that. I've never had luck figuring anything out with that, but I'm going to do it while I'm here. See anything? Pick you up. Otherwise, I'm just going to put this back together. Got the injector swapped. Uh, probably the least dramatic startup in my history. Right, whatever. As soon as it fires up, I'm going to check for leaks. subject but that's the video why did i even say that all right let's go i cleared the codes had it it had the code for four, number four injector but i think i was unplugging it before that's probably why it's got the code but zero codes now let's see what happens obviously not much to see but it's still reasonably cool and i'm pretty sure it's still bucking and oh yeah big time I'm gonna drive it around, see what code it throws, and go from there. It's getting kind of interesting. All right, this is hard to video. Check out this graph. This is RPM. Bumpy road. All right, see them waves right there? This thing's a five-speed. It's a manual, so that engine cannot possibly be actually doing that with that graph shows right there I think it's a crank sit I'll explain when I get stopped I don't want to read I right, got it back and it's kind of like an inconsistent out you can see the hose shaking there should be able to see the window and the crazy part I don't have any check in code so let me turn it off I'll explain what I was hoping for Maybe we do have an issue. I went to back it out. I'm gonna go crank it a few times. Listen, and there's what I would call a dead cylinder. <laughs> Maybe hard to hear. I can't get it on the right stroke. There's just like one cylinder that's not participating. Which is bad, but I would be happy to actually find something that's going on instead of just chasing random problems. Still trying to crank the key off. Here, there's one cylinder that's not participating. Try to get it quick as I can while it's still hot and then I'll pick you up. But I don't know if it's lifter, cam, yep. But why is it not throwing the check engine lights? What's confusing me? Pretty dead miss. All right, ignore George Strait. I had to talk in nine second in increments. First hit, it did have something. That's number four. It ain't doing anything at all. So I wonder why. May can actually see the rocker arms. First time I've heard that George Strait song I like. I wonder if, if y'all didn't watch my Comanche video. 
Yeah, it's recording. The uh, cam was actually eat off on the back side of the low. It's a weird scenario. Hopefully that's not what this thing is. But it was actually holding the valve open just enough to not make compression. Oh, Lord. It's the first time I pulled the cap off. We may just have lifter problems. That's nasty. Uh, I'm not a very good turbo uh, 4.0 expert, but... That would be exhaust. So not making compression. That oil looks bad. Like really bad. Alright. Well, my camera won't focus, but it's like brown not good may actually could just fix this thing with a lift or like a full flush i guess you'd say let's get a i'm gonna get my leak down out and see if we can figure out where the compression is going i right, got some air hose leak down let's see what she does god dang it works perfect I don't think it's getting air. If it can't get air, it can't make compression. But that means the leak down will check out perfect. Now, I've seen this before, but I don't know on this application. So. Leak down checks out pretty dang good. It's, it's moving the piston around. Got just a little bit of piston blow by, but putting in like 60 and it's coming out 55 56 so that's like spot on okay so leak down checks out good that means the valves are sealing good i can see the exhaust opening if i hold my hand here it's going to push air out but it's never going to do it again because it can't get the air from the intake valve to push the air out you can't get no air in to push out yeah simple so listen So I pushed the piston down, filled the cylinder full of natural, natural barometric pressured air, whatever the word I'm looking for, and yeah, just had a vacuum. So it pushed that air out that I put in and never did it again and I actually had a vacuum when I pulled it off right there. So that means that the, I don't know what that actually, I mean I know what that means, I'm trying to think what it could be wrong. The intake valve is not opening, but how are we not hearing like a strong lifter pitter patter or something catastrophic went wrong uh that sucks because this this has to come off wow all right well it'll be a second before i make forward progress on this but at least we're on to something it makes good sense now got a scary feeling it's cam related issues as soon as i can let this cool off i'll pick you up i'm probably going to go ahead and pull it the valve cover off and we'll see what's going on from there but kind of a drastic issue but i'm like so grateful i found a hypothesis if that's the word makes no difference on y'all's end but i just realized it only really acts up when it's hot so i gotta dissect it now mid-july this thing's hot i had to wear gloves never had to do that i hadn't touched anything i hope we find something the valve appears to be closed. Guys, thing's hot. Let's take my thing in there. Oop. Can't get down there. This one right there is the one we're looking for not to be moving. Wow. That's not good. That means it's uh probably wipe the cam out and wipe the lifter off so all i can think about is oh don't look that bad there so the oil probably looks good but oh, you can't see in there neither 
that stuff I was trying to show you earlier, the condensation. God, I need a camera. Yes, there we go. We can finally see it. It's just stuff. I don't really know. I've never seen it that particular color. But uh, much as we've learned on flat tapping and stuff like that, let's see, that's going to be too hot to touch. That's going to be squishy. I ain't even touched it yet. I can guarantee it. Maybe I can grab it with this. If the lifters blow it out on the bottom, it'll just be squishy. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, if I can hold the camera still, y'all can see that. It's gone. That sucks. Yep. The rest of them will be... They're hot. I'm glad I found the issue, but I don't know where this video goes from here. Before I forget to add it, this is gonna confuse people, but I'm gonna try the best I can to explain it. I got to thinking, I was like, how did it have compression cold? And now I just showed you it don't have compression at all because when I was doing a compression ch check at the first of the video, the engine was bone cold. It just pulled in the shop. Actually, I think it's like rested overnight. So everybody know, should know a cam lobe is a, a lobe and it's got a flat spot. So when I take it apart or whatever I do, the lifter sits on there flat, give or take. It's got a dome. I'm not getting too technical, but it has started eating and like wallering that out. And if I can find one, I'll show you, but it actually starts digging it out. And of course the lobe actually wipes off. So that cam is supposed to have, uh, don't quote me to this, 270 thousandths of lift. So I think what has happened is it probably has like just enough lift when the block is cold that when it rolled over to do the compression check, it just barely bumped that valve open. Now that the block has swelled up and everything's to spec, that, that cam lobe is actually not reaching. It's just grazing and not actually bumping the valve open. So I was like, that's pretty wild. If it sits here long enough, I bet, as long as I ain't run it, I bet I can put a, let it be cold and put the compression check back on. I guarantee it'll have compression again. Actually, Probably the next move on this Jeep, we'll see. All right, we cannot find a wiped out one, so I'm just gonna barely show you what's going on here. This lifter, you would think is flat right there. It's actually got like a very slightly one degree dome on it or something. I may have a picture. It actually sits offset of the lobe, and as this cam goes around, it spins this right here. I know it's hard to see, but it's actually spinning. You see a little patch right there? That coming up is how it actually spins this because if it was flat on flat, it would just sit there and push the oil off of it. That way, when it's round, it kind of carries some oil with it and spins it. But I'm gonna ask him, that's the biggest thing going around now, I'm not gonna get too technical on this, but everybody's running fully synthetic oils. They're so slick that they don't have enough traction to actually spin the lifter, so it just starts slipping and it'll eventually dig a hole. And when it digs a hole, then it starts creating traction and. We'll see when I get it apart, but I don't know what I'm doing with a Jeep yet. Master Engine Builder, you want to say anything? How many times you had this go wrong? I learned my lesson very quickly, but yes, I, I had a few of them go wrong. Yeah. Zinc, zinc is very important on dinosaur motors. Yeah. Like I said, that could be an entire video on itself, but long story, Justin built approximately four or five motors mm -hmm. or more during, and this is during COVID, and all these was coming from China probably. And they's all going bad. So, like I said, we'll save that for another day. I got to figure out what to do with this Jeep in my shop. All right, I was editing a video, realized I don't have a scene saying that the guy said to go ahead and fix it. So, you'll see the time lapse of me taking it apart. But one thing I was thinking about was, if you look how the four rows designed, the lifters get the oil first. Well, if you look how the where the oil pump sits, it's like just behind the distributor, which is in the dead center, which puts it dead in line with number four. So that means number four, number three and number four are by far the ones to get oil first. I bet that cracked head was probably getting cooling in the oil. And then since the PCV system probably wasn't working, when it would park, that oil would settle out of the, or that water would settle out of the oil. And then it's got a puddle at the bottom. So as soon as you fire it up, I'm gonna say that antifreeze coolant was the first to get picked up. and that was the first lifter to get cool. Just a philosophy, but it makes too much sense. So 
Here you go. I'm gonna take it apart. I didn't even tell Justin what we're doing. Am I getting filmed? All this is bolted together, charge cooler, everything. Oh. <laughs> Down. Oh, this is all one piece. Yeah, you gotta go up over the winch, and then yes, yeah, maybe let's walk around leaning on the back tire. Maybe sure it's gonna come loose. Not hard. Grab the headlock. Jesus. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, I was unbolted. It was just stuck. Again. Oh my gosh, I got it wrapped. I didn't miss nothing. Why is it so heavy? That charge cooler is pretty spicy. Woo! Mechanic work sucks. I might take the stupid winch off. I was going to put the cam through the grill, but I think I'm going to take the winch off because the cam is going to go right there to the dot. It's going to go fun. I get it. Let's just take the motor out and turn it upside down. Yeah, at this point. Holy moly, what a job. But I think I have put together some answers. I think I remember I did say something about the oil cap being milky. Uh, kind of covered it up, but you can see it in the valve cover. And then check out the timing cover. That's, uh, that's not very good. So I've got pictures I'll add from my phone I took while I was on time lapse there. I think I found a problem. My camera won't excel at this, but you see the green right there? antifreeze 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 so that head is cracked uh, you might can see it kind of to the left side it's running away on us right now so that means it's been pushing antifreeze into the oil antifreeze breaks down the oil and I'm pretty sure on time lapse you've seen me struggling with uh the lifter I hadn't touched it uh let's look at it first I already know what it's gonna look like oh golly that's the first I've seen one do that Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab another one. That's the exhaust one. We'll lay them side by side. Yeah, you. I feel like you can figure out what's going on here. So that is wore completely through. Let's see, cam lube, that would be, that'd be cylinder four. And yes, right there. Probably not gonna be able to tell good in camera, but that is supposed to be basically straight. So there's a cam lube, pretty straight. I know it's actually like, gosh one degree or something uh that's not no good so that just means more money nothing to it i believe i'll get the head off go get it cleaned up check it for cracks and then we'll go from there all right he's got it cleaned up look at it go i could not see that with a naked eye that's not even a bad one no but, like I tell everybody, a crack is never going to get any better. You got a head? I got one. I, I was going to say, I didn't think you did. I got one. Alright. I'm going to get a head, some cam, some lifters, some zinc, and put it all back together. Alright, so I got a new head without a crack, so I got that. Got a new set of Elgin lifters. So far, that's the best brand that we've come up with. Not hard facts but just what we prefer same elgin cam got a new cam and then got some at zinc additive justin had a good point about like even rotella they limited them to like 800 parts per million i'm pretty sure they said flat tappets require like 12 to 1600 so even though they say not to add zinc to the oil it's already like pre-designed Feel like you're supposed to make those numbers bump up to where they are especially for braking 
So I'm actually gonna flush this motor out, get all that gunk out of there best I can and let it dry, cleaned up, put it back together, see if we can get it running right. I actually wanna drive this thing, I've never, never drove it. We're getting so close. He's been doing. He's been in the same spot all day long. Every time I come Yesterday over, too. A lot heavier than I remember. We got. Some. I don't know if I can do that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. What's it sitting on my hands under it? Yeah. Getting so close, and I'm so nervous because Justin's got me scared. If I, if I had to do all this over. Anyways. Man, this is a job. This is, uh, well, a long time, I will say that. And as far as Jeep goes, I probably am one of the best at getting this stuff done, but still just takes a while. Got it oiled up. I'm gonna fire it up, see if it'll run smooth, and then I'm not filming cam break in. We'll do that on another video, but it's just such a gamble that like I taught you earlier how they gotta make their little home. If they make it, they make it. If they don't, you're in trouble. So wish me luck. I believe got everything together. Uh, hope I didn't forget anything. Just gonna go for a fire up, look for a smooth idle, and then go from there. I think we got smooth idle. Uh, could have primed the oil system, but every lifter manufacturer I run across say leave them dry, don't pre fill them. So you can't really prime the oil system. It kind of sucks, but it's what they say. So now I'm gonna say a little prayer and go hold her about two or three thousand for quite a while. Got a big fan, see what happens. It was doing so good, and now it's not. I don't know, it just started. Wouldn't rev up as good, and then it sounded like the turbo was spooling up harder than just for no reason. It wasn't spooling at all. I got a leaky hose clamp, but probably gonna let it cool off and see. It sounded good there. God, it's so scary. Well, let it cool off, fix that. You can, when you're breaking a cam in, do it in intervals, however you prefer. So that was essentially nine minutes. Probably do two more at that. We'll see what happens, but let it cool off, fix clamp, we'll go from there. So crazy, just like Justin said, a few years ago before, actually before COVID, everything seemed to be made a little better, but I would have fired this thing up, took off down the road, never even thought twice about zinc in the oil or anything like that. See how it sounds. I'm hoping maybe O2 sensor got a little warm or off. Back right, smooth. Gosh, I don't know. I mean, 
I haven't heard like a compression, so. See, I'm gonna try this one more time. All right, so I don't know what the deal was, but successfully ran good for another like 20 minutes. I just couldn't rivet up. If you rivet past like two grand, it tries to start building boost and just carries away. So I kept it around like 1900, just kept patting the gas. That was good, let it cool off, still got a bolt. All this, I was starting to put it together. I was like, let's make sure this thing runs. It's been a job. All right, I'll be back. All right, working on getting mess cleaned up. Got it backed out, running good. Got cold AC blowing. Go for a ride. We almost got to the road. That's good, it's running good. All right, check this thing. I got a short throw shifter. It's kind of nice. All right, so I went up and down the road. Everything's working the way it should. Uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy. We'll do a little pull with this thing, but it's so weird. I've never, I feel like I rebuilt the entire motor, but all I did was change the cam to a stock cam. And that's what we did talk about it. Number one, he did admit running a synthetic. synthetic oil. That's crazy, we'll talk about it more in a second. But that's what we was talking about, is we was gonna do a bigger cam, but this thing's got its own program or whatever that come with it. So if we started getting a different cam, we would have to change the program. And so I'm just gonna leave it alone. We'll, I don't really know what you see here, but we'll go. It holds boost right there. I think it's governed about five PSI. get too crazy with it i just uh spent two days putting the thing back together so at least want to make it back home where it's going right, here we go ain't too bad all right so it's good we'll figure up a bill on this but that's so wild that even I admit years ago, I've been running fully synthetic oil and some of my stuff, but just over the past few years, I think they changed some kind of numbers amount of uh, zinc that they're putting in oil. And I'm probably gonna do a full video on that because of this right here, but that's just wild. Didn't know where this one was going. I didn't expect it to be here and be doing this to this video, but glad it's running good. Hope you learn a good lesson like this guy probably did too. Thank you and have a good day.